mini PCs are getting popular and I had to check them out, so I went ahead and bought one. The model that I'm gonna check today is Minis Forum UM870 Slim. This model in question has an AMD Ryzen 7 8745H, codename Hawkpoint, a Zen 4 refresh CPU and the integrated GPU is 780M. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a dedicated GPU. To be honest, it's hard to add a dedicated GPU in such a small form factor. It comes paired with 32GB FDDR5-5600 and a 1TB SSD. It has one USB port that can double down as a mini display port, two USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3.2 on the front, a 2.5GHz network adapter and Wi-Fi 6E adapter. As display outputs, it is equipped with a 2.1 HDMI port and a display port. The BIOS is tailor-made. To be honest, this is an OK BIOS, as it has all you need in a nice graphical interface, but it's a bit too restrictive, at least from my point of view. The CPU's power has two modes, one balanced and the other one is performance. I use the one with the higher power ceiling, the performance one, for testing. You can also increase the GPU memory, as by default is set to 3GB. It comes with Windows 11 Professional pre-installed. I know that there were some models from other companies that had spyware pre-installed, so I will take caution and do a clean installation. I must confess that I scanned the system before, when I first got it, and there were no issues found by Bitdefender, but I went ahead and did a clean Windows installation. When looking for Windows drivers on their website, there is a 1.4GB file which is a bit strange. Clicking to download that file directs to a website where the archive with all the drivers is stored. I downloaded it and scanned it for potential spyware, but all was clean. To me, this mode of storing the drivers makes me think that this company is a startup with no resources, which is not the case here. They need to change this, as this doesn't inspire confidence, at least to me. Now let's move to the performance. I did run some CPU tests to see where it stands, and the 8745H is a decent CPU. On the screen now you can see the CPU score that I got in CPU Z, 684.4 in single thread and 7006.8 in multi thread. I converted to Intel's 12900K as you can see on the screen. I ran as well Cinebench 24, I got a multi score value of 960, which puts it ahead of the desktop version 5800X by about 140 points. I tested as well the noise output while stress testing this mini PC and to my ears it's not loud. It's producing noise more or less the same as any laptop or even a bit less. Take into account that the noise output that you see here is measured with the mobile phone by using an app and as you can see the phone is next to the unit. Moving on to thermals. When running for a max CPU burner for about 10 minutes the CPU maxed out at 88 degrees Celsius, this at around 25 degrees ambient room temperature. I think that in warmer climates where you have a room temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius or above it may thermal throttle. Keep in mind that you may never put this CPU to so much stress, so I think that the thermals are ok. When running Cinebench, the CPU temperatures never went above 85 degrees, again at 23 degrees room temperature. So what can this small lightweight PC do? For desktop and office use, I think it's perfect. YouTube doesn't have issues and doing office stuff on it is a breeze for this CPU. Coding, writing documentation and having music in the background its easy stuff for an 8 core CPU. When it comes to gaming, this is a different story. I set the GPU to use 8 GB of system memory and enable stats in MSI Afterburner so it can be seen the power consumption and thermals while gaming. I try CS2 first with some low settings and it stays below 100 FPS at 1080p with no upscaling. I could have lowered even more the settings and maybe reach 100 FPS, but then again there was no smoke grenades that can affect the frame rate. I think CS2 is ok on this mini PC. Moving on to the finals. This mini PC is able to stay above 60 FPS in most cases. You need to have everything at low settings, but even then you will see occasional dips below 60, so no good. I played as well some single player games trying to get 60 FPS, but it's not easy without upscaling. 
For starters, in Hogarth's legacy, even with low settings, you're not able to stay above 60 FPS, even with upscaling set to quality. I will not recommend to use anything below quality when it comes to upscaling at 1080p, as it doesn't look good, at least to me. I tried as well an older game, and not even in older games you can max out everything at 1080p. When using high settings, the game is playable, reaching close to 100 FPS or even above. If you plan to game on this kind of mini PC, make sure to lower your expectations, as most new releases will be out of its reach. Just look at Life is Strange Double Exposure. Now, another question to answer. Can this mini PC be used as a streaming PC? To be honest, I would not do that, as OBS can use only AMD H.264 encoder, which is not the best in my opinion. I used it to capture my testing rig screen, and it can use AMD's AV1 encoder, which is kinda strange that I can't use that for streaming as well. For my purpose, this is perfect. For this video, I recorded with both the 4080 Super and the integrated GPU from this mini PC. Let me know if you can tell the difference. But what about Linux? Well, the biggest issue is that the Wi-Fi that it comes with doesn't have a Linux driver, as you can see on the screen right now. I searched on the internet for possible solution without any luck. You have to either rely on the wire connection as well the option of external Wi-Fi adapter, but you'll be losing one USB port. I'm not sure if upgrading the Wi-Fi adapter will void your warranty as you'll have to remove the fit and change the adapter and maybe keep the old one in case there is an issue down the road and you have to send it back to them. A concern that I have is how reliable are these down the road as I'm not sure how long these mini PCs will last. I suspect that these are cheap because they may be using low quality parts, but I'm not sure, so don't take my word for granted. Let's hope that these are gonna last for more than 4 years, but there is no track record to confirm this. As for self-servicing, this mini PC is not optimal, at least in my opinion. You'll have to remove the feed to get access to the internals and clean it for dust and I'm not sure how many times you can do that, as the glue will worn off. Also, this mini PC doesn't have an Oculink port, thus reducing its ability to be enhanced for gaming or streaming down the road. And that's it for this video. I will not be keeping this as I already bought another one that has Oculink port and better Linux compatibility and also it's a lot easier to service. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.